Hi all, it's Bob Lindy from the Tradition School of Herbal Studies, having some fun walking around Boyd Hill on this beautiful Friday morning. And I might not upload this one for a little while, but I really always looking for some interesting things and happen to notice this wild geranium. And uh, it has a couple of names on it, Herb Robert, uh, Wild Geranium, Crane's Beak. And it's so rare for me to see the flower, and I'm sorry that doesn't focus very well. Let's see if I can have some luck focusing on you. Nope. Well, all right, you get the idea. And the crane's beak has a very distinct leaf shape, very unique. Um, and I don't usually see the flowers on it. Usually what I see is this part that is where it gets its name, crane's beak. And I'm going to move over to another plant that's a little bit further along. Oh, look. There's some wild amaranth. I'm going to snack on that in a minute. So, Callaloo in uh, Jamaica. I saw, oh, there's a nice patch that shows why it got its name of Crane's Beak. So, notice the red stems, which is usually something that's a little bit of warning for us. And I would argue that this is not one that is for lunch. It's one that's used more for medicine. Uh, it can be used internally or externally. And uh, all parts are used, but mostly the leaves. And with the crane's beak, uh, this is a good, strong astringent, um, and it can be used as an external wash for things like hemorrhoids, varicose veins. Uh, you could use it for any kind of weepy rash. It could be used topically. Oh, look at that. I don't usually get to see it in that state either. That's super neat. It's about to release some seeds, I do believe. Um, and it can be used internally for somebody who's super, super phlegmy. And so um, one of those things that if you're tending towards constipation, uh, sorry, dragonfly, ADD. Let's see how close I can get before he runs away. Hello, dragonfly. Go eat some mosquitoes before they take over the world. Um, back to the crane's beak. So we can use it internally, but if you tend towards constipation, if you're tending towards uh, running hot all the time, night sweats, hot flashes, you're the one who can't get enough ice water, this probably isn't the right herb for you. But if you're super phlegmy, uh, got lots of lumpy things, got um, fungus, uh, yeast, things like that are just a common part of your life, then this is one that can be uh, enjoyed as an infusion, as a tea. It can be used as a wash for specific areas. And I think they're pretty. This is a Florida native. As far as I know, it's a Florida native. I've seen it forever and ever. It grows throughout the Caribbean, and I'm sure it grows a, a bit up the eastern seaboard. Oh, look, it's right next to some Biden's Alba Spanish Needle, my favorite one to talk about. We'll save that for another video. But literally, just in an arm's reach, there's some elder. Who else have we got? More Biden's, Biden's, Biden's. Is that frog fruit? There's some frog fruit. Someday I'll do a video on that. We just passed the Callaloo right back there and a big patch of uh, pepper grass that if I got time and enough battery charge, I'll say something about that. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can find all the videos as I upload them. And catch us on Facebook, and we'll be doing a live on the last Friday of every month and doing an open forum so it's a chance for you to ask questions, ask the herbalist or ask the acupuncturist. We can talk about Western Chinese herbal medicine, um, about specific conditions and possible ways to approach those. So uh, you own me for two hours and I'll do my very best. Bonus if you catch us live so you can come up with new questions. But if you miss it, you can find all of them archived on the YouTube page for the Tradition School of Herbal Studies in St. Petersburg, Florida.